Greetings to everybody. My name is Anita Pelle. I work at the University of Szeged, Hungary as an associate professor and Jean Monnet chair. I am an economist and today I will speak about the economic crisis and resilience in Central and the European Union. I would like to start with a general overview of the EU post-crisis. Here you can find a few charts which show GDP, uh, employment and government debt of the EU and the Eurozone 19 countries between uh, the period of 1999 or 2001 and uh, 2018 or 19 where the latest data were available. We can say that growth Eurozone in 2013, however, countries have followed different paths. Employment, which is on the chart shown in 1,000 persons, so not in employment rate, has been growing again as well since 2014. However, it is also showing national varieties. However, the public finance situation is not favorable overall in the EU or the Eurozone. On the chart below, you can see the government debt levels of the region that have been stuck at high rates uh, compared to GDP. And actually, with the COVID crisis, they are starting to grow even higher uh, these, these times. On the next slide, you can see the Central and Eastern European countries and the Baltics in terms of GDP at market prices. The uh, effect of the crisis is obvious in all uh, countries' GDP growth paths. However, there are some differences. If you look at the Baltics, they follow very similar trends, uh, more or less on a single track, and show an overall improvement of the GDP, which was only interrupted by the crisis temporarily. If you look at the Central and Eastern European countries, you can see a bigger variety of the trends. In the next slide, the same regions are shown in terms of employment. This is quite interesting for the Baltic states who have been exhibiting the so-called jobless growth. Jobless growth means that they grew at high rates, as we could see previously, while the employment in persons stuck at lower levels than before the crisis. Hungary is an exception with the extensive expansion of the employment uh, sector of the labor market. Uh, Czechia also so shows steady improvement, while uh, Romania experienced a loss of the human uh, human of the human resource and Poland improvement, but at a lower rate than pre-crisis. If we move on to the next slide, we can now turn our attention to the competitive advantage of these countries. These changed by the crisis as before the crisis, the nature of these countries' competitive advantage lied mainly in the combination of EU membership, already pre-accession with the prospect of joining the EU, favorable geographical location, especially the proximity to headquarters as well as markets, low wage for relatively high-skilled employees, and a good growth, growth potential with a developing business environment. What happened during the crisis? Earlier convergence trends stopped and the crisis resulted in a within EU structural polarization, consolidating the semi-peripheral status of the CEECs. What do we mean by within EU structural polarization? This means that uh, during the crisis and since the crisis, the periphery of the EU, including the Central and Eastern European countries, have been, uh, con uh, have been stuck in a lower value-added uh, production segment of global value chains, 
why the higher segments like uh, design, research and development are in the core countries of the EU. So, as a result of this within EU structural polarization, the value added capabilities of the core and the periphery changed into a direction which unfavors the periphery as they have lost their potentials. In the next slide, there is a chart from an earlier article of mine showing the intra-EU post-crisis divide. If you look at the figure on the horizontal axis, you can see the GDP per capita at current prices, while in the vertical axis, uh, the GCI scores of the EU member states are shown. GCI stands for Global Competitiveness Index. What does the chart show us? Firstly, there is a positive correlation between GDP per capita and competitiveness. So more developed countries tend to be more competitive. Secondly, the EU is divided into an advanced and competitive core and in a periphery, which is at lower GDP per capita levels and lower levels of competitiveness. This is a result of the crisis in that the core was highly resilient to the effects of the crisis and could keep or even improve its value added capabilities. Now the southern periphery of the Eurozone and the post-socialist new member states mingle in the periphery. They are no more separate from one another. These are the crises these are the countries that have been hit hard by the crisis and have been either constrained into cost competitiveness for the Eurozone periphery or have been opting for it, which is the case for new member states. What is cost competitiveness? Cost competitiveness means that these countries wish to or can only stay uh, in the internal markets with their products by offering lower prices. If they offer lower prices, they must also, of course, keep wages and income of economic actors low. So this is the way the peripheral status is consolidated. In the next slide, you can see another chart of us that we calculated uh, with my colleagues for the European Union member states. This is a this is actually two figures. There is a large figure and a figure in the figure. Uh, both of them are trying to so show beta convergence. Beta convergence in statistics implies that countries initially less developed should or are expected to exhibit higher growth rates and thus there is upward convergence within the country group. In the large figure, you can see the relation between the log of GDP per capita in 1995 and the accumulated growth rate of these countries, also the log of it uh, from 1995 to 2017, so for the whole period. In the figure, in the figure, the same is shown for the period 2009-2017, so for the post-crisis period. What is uh, these figure and the other figure showing us, they are showing us that for the full period, there was actually a beta convergence for the EU. But if we only look at the post-crisis period, it is no more there. Uh, in the figure, there is one country that stands out uh, towards uh, the higher end, and that is Ireland, which already had high GDP per capita but also grew spectacularly post-crisis, actually surpassing all other countries. If we move on, we can now take a closer look at the recovery of the CE region from the crisis, which we can now call the previous crisis, as the COVID-19 is bringing us the next crisis in the European Union. 
these are data from the Eurostat and they are showing that uh, the countries have shown some convergence in the overall period of 2007 to 2018 with various uh, success though. However, there are, uh, diver there are also differences among the paths. In particular, Czechia, which is the most uh, developed of these countries now, is currently at, uh, at uh, roughly 90% of EU average. Slovenia is back on track, but earlier level of convergence could not be achieved yet. The group of Hungary, Poland and Slovakia show a return to convergence, but after many years of loss of convergence. Romania has surpassed Croatia and Bulgaria is the farthest from EU average, but is slowly keeping up. Next slide, please. We must also talk about the long-term labor market trends in Central and Eastern Europe. And there is a big problem here, and that is shrinking working age populations, which are likely to characterize the whole of the region. According to projections, the largest rate of decline is expected in Poland, and the tipping points are to come in the early or mid 2020s for all of these countries. And this can only partly be offset by positive net migration, even in the most optimistic scenarios, but we know that these countries are not very much in favor of migration. Next slide, please. As an overview, we can say about the European economic integration currently that the financial and economic crisis was a game changer for, an e for the EU. And now the COVID-19 is likely to be the next one. The internal structure of the EU has changed considerably. Although the core periphery divide has stayed persistent, core countries have shown enduring steady performance and have coped well with the crisis. The Eurozone periphery has shown a deteriorating performance with long lasting negative effects. And the Eastern new member states, including Central and Eastern Europe, uh, were halted by the crisis in their earlier impressive convergence and have followed diverse paths since then. Thank you very much for your attention.